Hello, this is Pete, or Kenshin1913, and this is another Game of Thrones review. Um, in this uh, episode, we're going to talk about Episode 2, The King's Road. Um, yeah, so basically, like I said in the last episode, we're going to go through the characters, we're going to go through the plot, we're going to go through your, my favorite line, new characters, favorite kill... Um, what else? If the book stayed true, or if the show stayed true to the book, all this stuff will be in the video description down here. If you want to participate, go right ahead, because that's what I'm making these videos for, so we can participate and talk about Game of Thrones. So anyways, the um <clears throat> second episode is called The King's Road, and basically that's the title they got from The King's Road, which is a, uh, which is a road that uh, goes from, I believe, Winterfell to King's Landing, or even further. But yeah, there's various roads in in Westeros, and, and the main road is called King's Road. So um, it's just basically based off the events uh, that happened there. So let's kind of quickly go through a brief summary of the episode. So the episode starts as, or if it ends, if you remember last, last episode... It ended with Bran getting pushed off the tower by uh, Jamie Lannister. And we don't know if he's dead. That's right. But instead of showing us what's going on in Winterfell, they showed us Danny or Daenerys, and how she's dealing with her life as uh, the Khaleesi, basically, uh, Khal Drogo's wife. And she's not enjoying it, as uh, as you, you can see through the, through the show. So basically... Jorah Mormont, he basically is talking with her, you know, he's telling her it gets better. He's the exile, by the way. And so then they have, a, uh, Viserys and him have a talk of why he was exiled. And apparently he was exiled, um, because he was selling some, sl selling some people that he caught on his land, uh, when he lived back in Westeros. And apparently, uh, slavery is illegal in Westeros. And, yeah, the Dorf, Dothraki, they're kind of like a nomad kind of people, so they're always moving. And, uh, yeah, so it kind of shows, like, uh, you know, their nomadic nature because there's two things that they always have is horses and, and grass. And people can't live on grass, apparently. Jorah said that. So then we go back to Tyrion. He's at Winterfell. He's sleeping in a, in a dog pen. He gets up, all right? He must have been drunk because Tyrion Lannister, he's the small guy. The dwarf, all right. He's a small fella, and he basically uh, gets drunk quite a bit and whores around. So he uh, he gets up. He sees, or Joffrey gets him up. Joffrey is his nephew, Cersei's uh, Cersei's son, and uh, basically he he tells Joff, you know, they're telling him they're leaving from Winterfell, and uh, yeah. So uh, Tyrion tells Joffrey to go. And, uh, you know, tell, tell, uh, the Starks that, you know, tell him, you know, we're sorry about the kid, and if there's anything he can do, he's got to do it. So he doesn't want it, so Joffrey doesn't want to do it, so Tyrion smacks him around a bit, showing you the relationship that they have. Is Tyrion does not like Joffrey, and, uh, you know, Joffrey doesn't do anything to him. So, during that scene, there's a man, all right, standing next to him, and he is, um... He is Sandor, Sandor Kaglane, played by Rory McCain, all right, and, uh, or McCann, and, uh, basically he's called the Hound in, in the show, he, half of his face is kind of burnt, we'll find out why later, and he's a mountain of a man, he's a big fella, all right, and he's basically the bodyguard to Joffrey at this point, um, and then after that, you know, Tyrion goes and has breakfast, and they talk about how Bran survived the fall, and Tyrion kind of looks at at uh, Jamie and uh, Cersei, and they're kind of giving each other looks. And so, you know, he goes on talking about how he's going to head to the wall because he wants to see the biggest uh, biggest structure that man has ever built. So that's kind of where that ends. Then we head to, and basically uh, they find out that John is also taking the black. He's going to be a, ra a ranger down at the Night's Watch, so he's going to. So what's happening is um, Ned and Sansa and Arya are going to go to King's Landing. They were going to take Bran with them, but Bran 
is in a, actually he's in he's in a uh, I guess coma or something. He's in like a comatose state right now. So let's see. Uh, then after that, John gets a sword that he gives to Arya, who him and Arya kind of like a nice little bond going because they they're in the book. They're both they're both uh, described as being lo looking more like Ned than anything than than the other kids. So they have like this bond. And basically, John gives Arya a sword, a pointy like fencer sword, uh, an EP or something like that. I forget what they call it. Anyways, um, and he call and. John tells her that every every good sword has a name, and so she names it Needle. And then my one of my favorite lines of this episode is where John tells Arya, "Stick him with the pointy end." That's lesson number one: stick him with the pointy end. So that's one of my favorite lines. So <clears throat> Catelyn, Bran's mom, is in here is in his room, and she's kind of inconsolable. She's crying, and she's making like this thing. And, uh, John comes in and, and wishes, tells, tells Bran that he's going to the Night's Watch. He's going to be, and he's going to be at the wall. And, and she kind of yells at him. And then Ned comes in and, uh, and John leaves. Let's see, where are we here? And then, basically, they leave. Uh, Ned, you know, the, uh, the king and his party and Ned and his party, they end up leaving. And on the road, uh, Robert and Ned talk of old times. They kind of, they kind of reminisce about uh, what was happening way back in the day. And they and they talk about Wyla, who's supposedly this woman, who Ned, um, <clears throat> who Ned uh, had had an affair and had a, a kid with John with, or had an affair, and then had John. All right, uh, and so then they get a piece of news about the Targaryens and Robert doesn't like the Targaryens because he actually overthrew them and uh, basically the Targaryens did some bad stuff well, I might get into it later but the Targaryens did some bad stuff they were kind of crazy and so Robert kind of killed them and kind of usurped the throne and basically he wants them dead but because he hears over overseas that the, uh, that uh, Danny and Viserys are with the Dothraki but Ned's not worried so He's pretty pissed off, and then we go back to uh, Danny or Daenerys and Khal Drogo, and they're banging. Well, they're not really. Khal Drogo is banging her, and uh, yeah, um, you know she's not liking it. And so the one thing that kind of gets her mind off of this terrible incident is looking at the dragon eggs. She's just very, uh, very tranced with them almost. So then we head off to John and Tyrion, and they're going towards they're going north towards the Wall, and uh, they're just basically talking about like what the Night's Watch is, like there's supposedly this defend these defenders of the realm, they uh, protect the realm from whatever's in in the north, and then you know, J uh, John asks Tyrion why he's always reading, and basically Tyrion's like you know his brother Jaime is a real big is a real great sword fighter, and uh, basically he has to be sort of like a sword fighter too, but in the way with his mind. So he's always reading books to keep books, to keep his mind as sharp as a sword or something like that. I forget what the line is. So then we go back to Winterfell, and this is where a lot of the, uh, the good stuff starts happening. Rob basically steps up because Maester uh, Lewin, okay, who is played by, he is... Uh, Played by Donald Sumter, and he is—he's uh, kind of like—he's kind of like the healer, the you know, like the priest, the chancellor he, uh, of Winterfell. He's kind of like uh, you know, very wise old man, and he's talking to Catelyn about how they need to uh, continue with the affairs of Winterfell while Ned is gone. And she's like, I don't care, have someone do it. And then Rob steps up, and he kind of becomes like the interim. Uh, messenger or interim lord of Winterfell, and then uh, the wolves are howling, the dire wolves, and most of the kids, as I told you in the last episode, they got dire wolves, and most of the kids have named their dire wolves like, like uh, <coughs> Sansa's is named Lady, Ro Rob's is named uh, Gray something, Gray Wind or something. I don't remember. Uh, John's his name is Ghost. 
uh, uh, Arias is Nymeria, and they didn't, Bran and, and Rickon didn't really name theirs yet. But anyways, all the dire wolves are howling in the yard. They open up, and there's a fire. So Rob goes running, all right? And then all of a sudden, an assassin appears and tries to kill Bran, all right? But Bran's dire wolf steps in and kills the assassin. So after that, you know, and, and uh, Catelyn uh, kind of injured her hands trying to get the, because the assassin had a knife. And Caitlyn, or, yeah, Caitlyn, uh, or whatever, cat, I'm gonna call it cat. She kind of got her hands injured by trying to stop this guy. And then we go back to Danny Daenerys, who's interested in the eggs, right? She's looking at these eggs. She's mesmerized by these eggs. She, she's talking with, uh, with one of the, her, uh, handmaidens. And, uh, so she's pretty, in, and so Danny is very interested in these dragon eggs. And these dragon eggs will be more important later. So then they go back to uh, Caitlyn, her cat, and she's looking around around Winterfell at the area that Bran fell, and she kind of, like, inspects it. And she finds, like, this blonde piece of hair, all right? And then she kind of, they have a meeting with her and uh, Sir Roderick uh, Castle, who's played by Don, uh, Ron Donachi. He's basically, like, he's the uh, master of arms at Winterfell. He's, like, the guy who trains all the... All the people to be a swordsman, to be swordsmen, all the dudes. And they have a, he, ha, she has a meeting with like the closest people there. Uh, and she kind of says that the Lannisters tried to kill Bran. And uh, the, the dagger that they, that the assassin had was Valerian steel, which Valerian steel is a very, very sharp dagger. And not, there's not many pieces of them in the world. And it's kind of cool. And then, um, let's see here. Then, we go back to Danny, um, where are we here? Daenerys, and she's talking with her handmaiden, and her name was Dor Doria, played by Roxanne McKee, and, uh, she, she's talking about how, uh, she, she, uh, you know, they want to, um, she wants to tame Carl, uh, Carl Drogo, right? And basically what happens is they, uh, they learn how to tame him sexually. So then Carl comes in one night and he wants to bang. And uh, <clears throat> she's like, no, we're not doing it this way. And then she kind of like uh, turns him around and tames him. Because the Dothraki always uh, take their women like dogs or whatever. Like, So she's like, you know what? You're going to look into my eyes when we're banging. So <clears throat> next, let's see. So that happens and then they kind of like have a moment, you know. And so we head back to not the final one of the final parts of the other thing. I know I'm I'm taking a long time, but actually it's not that long compared to the whole show. But anyway, so so we go back to Ned and his party and Robert and his party, and they're in a tavern. They stopped at a tavern, and Joffrey and Sansa are talking, or or Sansa's actually talking with the Hound, and then she meets this uh, this guy named Sir Ilan Payne, and basically he is the, um, <clears throat> he's played by Wilco Johnson, and he is the, um, the King's Justice, or the, he's like the lead executioner. Now, back when he was, uh, with the other king, before Robert, he said some junk, and basically the king ripped out his tongue, so he can't talk anymore, but he, he's still a good, um, <clears throat> still a good heads, uh, you know, executioner kind of guy. So, Joffrey kind of, like, scares these guys away, and he's trying to act all nice, and usually, and if you've seen the show, I mean, Joffrey is kind of a douche, and so he takes San Sansa on a walk, because Sansa is all, um, <clears throat> she, he's all, she's all, you know, like, she, oh, it's like a fairy tale, Joffrey's a prince, oh my god, you know, because she's been, she has been betrothed to him, all right? And so they're walking, they're having a little bit of a drink. Joffrey's a little drunk. And they stop and they hear Arya and this other kid, Micah, and they're playing sword fighting. So then Joffrey thinks he can stop them from fighting and he threatens uh the the uh, boy, the boy that Arya's fighting with and and then, uh, kind of like, he runs away, and then Joffrey's trying to, trying to hit Arya, and then her, uh, direwolf, Namiria, comes in, 
and bites his arm, and then Sansa's like, you're ruining it, you're ruining it. So, um, after that, Arya runs away with the di her direwolf, Nymeria, and she kind of tells him to, you know, run away. Don't You can't be around me anymore. So, Nymeria goes away. And, uh, they finally find Arya after searching through the night. And, uh, one of Ned's, um, <clears throat> one of Ned's right-hand men, Yori Castle, who's, or Cassell, who's played by Jamie Seaves, he, uh, He's there, and he he's like Ned's right hand man, and he um basically he tells Ned that they found her. So Ned goes back to the tavern where they have this scene with the king, who's trying to figure out how to discipline his son and uh, Arya. Basically, um, let's see, Ar you know uh you know it's kind of like Joffrey's word versus Arya's word because. You know, Joffrey was starting, he was being a jerk, but they don't believe Arya. And then they bring in Sansa, and since she's kind of in love with uh, Joffrey, she's not. She's like, I don't remember anything. So then the whole thing gets screwed over, and then Arya and Sansa fight about, you know, you saw something, you're just not saying anything, you're being a jerk. And what ends up happening is Robert tells Ned he has to kill the direwolves, but since the only direwolf left is Lady... Ned has to kill Lady, which is a little sad. But as Ned kills Lady, Bran's eyes open, and that's how the episode ends. So yeah, that was the brief summary of uh, The King's Road. So let's talk about new characters. I think I already went through them. The Hound, uh, Maester Lewin, um, Sir Roderick, Sir Ilan Payne, Yori Gat Castle. And the one person I forgot to mention was Marcella, and basically... She is Cersei's and Cersei's daughter. Um, she is played by Amy Richardson. And so let's talk about the uh, plot. Uh, I think the plot was very good uh, about you know when uh, Rob, uh, basically when the whole thing when Rob and um, is stepping up to be the new Lord of Winterfell. Uh, I, I like that part afterwards because. Then there was this assassination attempt. You're like, who, who's doing it? And then you had this whole incident happening down at, <clears throat> at the tavern on the King's Road. And, and, and you know, he said, she said. And then they had to kill the dire wolf. It was sad. And I just think the, uh, the you know, it, it was pretty good. Like, it starts out because as every season, as every show does, you know, you got to explain things. Especially with this because it's based on a book. You got to explain a lot of stuff. So, you know, you got all that. Um, what I didn't like, I don't know, there's not much I didn't like about it. With the with the characters, I'd say that they, there's not much that I didn't like about the new characters in the episode. Basically, some of these uh, characters were actually shown in uh, episodes, bef in the last episode, but I decided not to show them because they were so minor that if I showed them all, it would take forever to show them. So, uh, yeah, I liked how they kind of, for the most part, explained who most of these people were with, like, a, a line or two in the, in the actual episode. Like, oh, that guy, he's the, he's the head executioner. Oh, this guy, he's the hound. He's the, you know, bodyguard, this, that, and the other. Uh, so there's not really anything that I disliked about the characters. Um, the only thing I'd probably have to say that, I, I don't know, I disliked was... Like, that they didn't say all... Like, there's a bunch of handmaidens for Daenerys. And, uh, she... <clears throat> she basically... They don't really say their names. It's like, you know, here's this one and here's that one. But, you know, with a TV show, it's kind of hard to explain all those... All the characters all the time. So, that's what you're gonna do. So, my favorite line from the show was Stick em with the Pointy End by Jon Snow. Or There Must Always Be a Stark in Winterfell by Caitlyn. I think that was good. When they were having a meeting, she's told them, because Rob's like, I'll go down and tell Ned. Because basically what happens is she suspects the Lannisters, and then she's like, I'm going to go down and tell Ned. And then she's going to go with Roderick down to uh, King's Landing and warn him about all this or tell him about it. So then Rob wants to go, and she's like, nah, there's always has, there was a blah, 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 blah. There must always be a Stark in Winterfell. And then, basically, my favorite kill was the kill, the assassin killed by the dire wolf. 
But there were also a couple other kills in the show as well. Lady, the dire wolf by Ned. And Maca um, Micah, uh, who was rode down by the hound. He was the, uh, <clears throat> he was the, what is it, the, uh, the kid, the kid who was playing with Arya. And then finally, did this book, did this episode go true to the book? I think it did in the aspect that they, I like how they made, uh, if you read the book, I like how they made Jon Snow more of a manly character in the show rather than in the, um, in the, in the book in the beginning. Basically, he starts out as like a crybaby. He's always crying. It feels like he's, he's always crying. And when he's talking with Bran before he leaves, he's weeping. And then you had Catelyn like, like tell him, get out, get out. Why are you here? You know, she was looking all mean and like venomous and, you know, she was just a, she was just being a big DB, and, uh, and, uh, yeah, I like how they didn't make John like, a crybaby, and, uh, I liked, I think everything stayed fairly true to the book, again, I mean, this series on a whole is gonna stay fairly true to the book, in that aspect, but, uh, like, right now, I mean, that's all they can go with, they can't really, like, uh, go a little different. So, uh, yeah, that, that has been, uh, episode two, The King's Road, the review of Game of Thrones in the next episode. I will review episode three. So this has been Kenshin1913, and I will try to get Rob as well in a couple of these. I, again, you know, it's, uh, timings issues, we can't get together or something's going on. But yeah, this has been Pete, your Kenshin1913, this has been another Game of Thrones review. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.